Welcome to this new class in your Microtech Network Associate course. In the previous section, we talked about the HTTP, all the advantages that we are going to get with that protocol to deliver dynamic IPs to our users. In this section, we are talking about ARP. In the previous class, we talked about the static ARP and how that can increase the level of security by having static entries in the ARP table in the router. In a way that now, we must explicitly set the MAC addresses that are allowed to exchange network information in our router. But how can we merge those two protocols and take some advantage of their functionality? So in this class, we'll explore how to use DACP to add those ARP entries into the ARP table. DACP is able to do that. In the previous example, I had three PCs, four PCs now with the new one that we added, connected to that network. But if we are adding more devices, we need to go to IP, ARP, and then we need to manually add an entry to the ARP table. In some cases, if we have DHCP, we can combine a static leases. Remembering static leases, we are going to explicitly add the MAC address that is going to get an IP address in our network and any other MAC address that is not in the static list section won't be able to get an IP. So if we combine that functionality with reply only on the interfaces and the power and the ability of the ACP to add entries to our table, we can get a pretty good solution in our local area networks. Let's see how we're going to give permissions to the ACP to add those ARP entries. The process is pretty straightforward. If we already have static leases in our DACP server, we simply need to go to the server and there is an option that is called Add ARP for Leases. So that means that every time that the DACP server is allocating an IP address to one device, it's going to take that MAC address and it's going to put an entry into the ARP table. So let's see how that is going to work in our lab. So if I go now to, to the router, I have four entries in the ARP table. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove all of those. So at this point, all those devices will lose connectivity with remote networks. So you can see all those PCs are not able to reach remote networks because we need an entry into our table. But those devices are using the HCP. They are getting an IP dynamically. What we can do is that I can give permission to the DHCP server to add those entries there in the R table. So to do that, we can simply go to IP, then the HCP server. And now if we go to the server in the first tab, I'm gonna look for the server running on Ether3. I will double click on that. And basically, if we go down, we have this option, add R for leases. And now you can simply click apply and OK. If I go back to the R table, you can see that now the ACP has included all the information in the R table. So we have four entries created dynamically, but we have a new flag, H. That means that that entry was added by THCP. If we have configured our network like that, it's still in this point, if we have devices that are joining the network, for example, I will add a new device here, and I connect that device, that device is still is going to be able to reach remote networks because the ACP is using a dynamic pool. And the ACP is going to put that entry into the R table. So now we are protected from those users only static IPs. But if I come and I say IP the ACP in that device, that probably is an unauthorized device. We can see that that device got an IP and also has network connectivity. And that's because the DACP server is adding the entry here in the R table. That's why the recommendation 
if you are planning to use this as a new layer of security in your network is to combine static entries with reply only on the interface with static leases. If you don't have a static leases in your DHCP server, basically any device will still be able to join to your network. So how can we go with static leases? So let's assume that this device with the IP 3.195 is an unauthorized device. We don't have any idea about who is owning that device. We want to have those entries added dynamically by the ACP, but we don't want that device here on that list. So to do that, we need a static leases. As we covered in the previous section, to have a static leases only on the DACP server, the first step is to go to the server, and then we need to check the address pool and we're gonna say static only. So if I said that, then only devices that have a manual entry on the leases will get an IP address. So I'm going to select the static only, we'll click OK, and then if I go to leases, I can see all those IPs here because they will try to renew that IP when they are reaching 50% of the list time. What I'm gonna do is that I'm going to convert those dynamic entries for all the trusted devices to static entries. So I will start with 196, make static, 197, make static, 198, make static, and 199, make static. So I remove that entry. So now we can see that we have only static entries for our devices, and the server is only going to use those static entries. If I come to GNS3 in this point, and I add a new device, and I connect that device to the switch, now that device won't be able to get an IP address. And without an IP address, that device won't be able to reach internet. And if that device is setting a static IP, it's not going to have an entry in the R table. And also, that is going to avoid that device from reaching remote networks even if that device has an IP in the network that is assigned to that broadcast domain. So let's see how that combination of a static leases and ARP with reply only on the interface is gonna help. So if I go IP DACP, that device is going to be trying to discover the DACP server, but the DACP server is simply going to send information to devices that we have with a static entry. So it's not going to work. So probably this user is going to say, okay, I will try to bypass that. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to set a static IP. So for example, we can use this command IP, and then 192.168.3.50, for example, and slash 24. And then in this VPC, we can simply type the gateway after that, and we can press enter. So now that device has an IP that has been manually configured with a valid IP, with a valid subnet mask, with a valid gateway, is in the same network than the rest of devices. But if I try to ping 8.8.8.8, that is not gonna work because the interface Ether3 is not going to allow MAC addresses from that device because Ether3 had the reply only enabled, and the only protocol that has permission to add that entry is the HCP. But the HCP is not willing to provide an IP to that device because there is no static entry for it. This is how we can combine the HCP and ARP. I hope that this class has been informative for you, and I hope to see you in our next section. Thank you.